are you MIG welding stainless steel with a high helium mix? Well in this video I'm going to show you different gas alternatives to save you money so your pocketbooks don't go flat. Get no when the whistle go. What is up YouTube? Thanks for joining me. I have another great video for you and we are going to be welding stainless steel on that 110, 220 multi-process MIG welder that you already have or maybe you're looking to buy. But in my case, I am using a Fronius Trans Steel 2200 in this video. So, stainless steel, all right? Now, there's so many things you can get into and spend a lot of time talking about, but I gotta keep it simple and neat because I don't want a 50 minute video. We need to keep this down below 15 minutes, right? So you stay entertained. So number one, Determine that base material. There's so many uh, types of base materials out there in stainless, and if you don't know what you're welding on, don't even start the project, okay? Determine that base material first. It's no different than aluminum. Uh, there's a variety of base materials out there, so make sure you choose the right one. There's four basic types of stainless, okay? There's austenetic stainless. So austenetic stainless is typically a 300 series base material. So the most common austenetic stainless is a 304. Then there's a 316. Uh, the second is ferretic. So ferretic stainless is typically a 400 series base material. With 409, you have high heat corrosion and strength compared to carbon steel. So automotive industries go with 409, but it's a ton cheaper than austenetic 304 because they're less, there's quite a bit less nickel content in that base material. So that's ferretic. Ferretic is magnetic. Next one is martensetic stainless. So martensetic stainless has more carbon content in the base plate and it's the least common of stainless steels, but you'll, um, manufacturers use this for like cooking ware, like pots and pans. The fourth one is duplex stainless so this is uh duplex is for like high corrosion resistance so you'll see this in like heat exchangers so those are the four different types of stainless uh steels so make sure you determine the right one ppe gear i uh, can't stress it enough ppe gear is the number one the most important thing anyways when it comes to welding and fabrication but uh, when it comes to stainless steel it's even more important because when you're welding stainless it puts off a plume, right? And that plume has chromium in it. And if you're inhaling chromium, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, it creates lung cancer. And I don't think you want lung cancer. Um, there's a thing called hexavalent chrome, and it's really big in the industry right now. So make sure you're using the uh, proper PPE gear for your skin, gloves, um, um, but also ventilation too. You want something with filters to where you're not breathing in that hexavalent chrome because I don't think you want lung cancer. You can talk all big and bad, but at the end of the day, we have one life and you don't want lung cancer. So make sure you use the proper filtration system for those lungs. What are we gonna be welding with? We're gonna be welding 304 base plate and all with 308 wire, except for I have four different types of wire provided by Blue Demon, and I got Blue Dini right here. He's gonna be joining us in this video. But uh, I got four different types of 308 wire. Why four different types? Because we have a 308L, which is common, and then we have a 308LSI. Why would somebody want a 308LSI? That's because it has about 1% silicon in it. It helps wet the toes out. So I'm gonna show you the difference between those. Then I have a 308 flux core wire or dual shield flux core, where you can use a 7525 CO2. If you don't mind chipping away flux and you wanna save on gas costs, well, there's an option there. And then I was researching on Amazon and I found that Blue Demon made a self-shielded stainless steel 308 wire. And I've never done it before, so I'm just gonna try it out in this video. I don't know how it's gonna work, but if you are doing any mobile work and you don't have any gas, well, it's gonna be an option. So thanks for watching, hit that subscribe button and let's get welding because I know that's what you guys want to see. See ya.
We are running 030-308 LSI on 60,000's play with 98.2 CO2. Let's start from left to right. I got the machine set up for stainless steel or chrome nickel, set to 030 wire diameter 98.2 CO2. I could set this to 60,000 material plate thickness, but I ran a few prior to this video, and I found that uh, 190 inches per minute wire feed speed, which equated to about 45 thousandths on the machine setting at 15.4 volts. The inductance over here, the squiggly line, um, minus 3.5 seemed to be best. So what it does set a minus is it freezes the puddle faster. So 190 inches per minute at 15.4 volts and minus 3.5 on the inductance. Now, when you're watching this weld, very little spatter on it, partly due to the LSI it has more silicon in it. So it produces less spatter in the weld seam versus like a 308L. But what I'm doing is I'm running a backwards C motion. So I'm going down to the base plate, up to the top in a backwards C motion which made it consistent on the toes wetting in the top and bottom wall. You can see very little spatter. Here's the weld seam, looking excellent. We're gonna be running the exact same thing. The only difference, we're using 190 thousandths material. Oh, on one tempo. Looking at the face plate again from left to right, we're set up for stainless steel, 030, 98.2 CO2. I am running 190 thousandths material thickness on 110 power, so I'm gonna turn my wire feed speed up almost to the max, which is 380 inches a minute. I'm gonna increase the volts to 21 volts because I need to ensure that the toes are gonna to wet out on the plate. It's another horizontal fillet weld. I am doing a back and forward motion. I'm trying to create like a little dime stack for cosmetic appearances. Now you notice that it's a little unstable. That's because I'm like in between a short circuit transfer in a spray transfer just because I don't have enough oomph on the 110 power. Take a look at this weld seam. Very consistent, very little spatter, and check out the dime stack. Next up is a 308 dual shield flux core with a 7525 CO2 all on 110 power. From left to right, we're set up for 71T1, 035, 7525. Yes, it is a stainless steel flux core. But there's not actually a line, so I'm using 71T1 at about 310 inches per minute and 21.3 volts. My inductance here, the squiggly line, is set to minus 3.5, so it freezes. Now, I ran a few coupons before this, and this wire seems to run best in a range of about 290 inches per minute to about 475 to 500 inches per minute. That's probably the sweet spot for the wire. So you would want to run a little bit cooler on it for burn through, um, but this is the most consistent I could get it. Now I'm in a drag position, about a 30 degree. It is very stable. And check out this weld seam, chip off the slag, it comes off like a breeze, no spatter. I'm pretty impressed with it. The only thing I'm changing here is the material thickness. We are running 190 thousandths material thickness. All on one tempo. After running the 60 thousandths plate, um, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. So I dropped it down to about 290 inches per minute and my voltage is around 22 volts. And my inductance, I'm not gonna show you here, but it's still at minus 3.5. Uh, I'm gonna run my travel speed a little bit slower on this material thickness. So it is 190 thousandths uh, material thickness. I am running about a 30 degree drag position. But my travel speed, I'm going a ton slower. I would say I'm somewhere in like the 9 to 11 inches per minute range just to get the toes to wet into the top and bottom plate. Check out the slag. Pop! There it goes. Nice and easy. Nice weld seam. Awesome. Now the only difference with this next weld test is we're on 220, 230 volt power so you can see the real sweet spot. So now on 220, 230 volt, I have the wire feed speed set to 565 inches per minute and 25.3 volts. And I'm still running that 30 degree drag uh, with about a 5 8 stick out or contact tip to work distance. Now my travel speed and the way the toes wet in, it's way more consistent um, because we have the increased wire uh, feed speed in the puddle. Check it out, slag just knocks right off. 
and check out this weld seam. Booyah! This weld test, everything is the same, including power, but we are running out of position vertical up fillet weld. Compared to the previous weld test and the horizontal fillet weld, since I'm running out of position, I bumped my wire feed speed down to about 520 with 24.9 volts. I'm going to get this thing tacked up here, get my position. And the cool part, the best part about dual shield flux core is you really don't need to do much. You can just get a straight on position, maybe with like a 15 degree push angle. But you can run it straight uphill with no weed pattern, no oscillation, and it ties right in. No problems. That's one of the benefits of dual shield flux core. I had to try this. There was some self-shielded stainless flux core 035, so let's give it a shot. From left to right again, make sure you're in self-shielded flux core. Set your wire diameter. In this case, it's 035, and there's no gas, so there's no selector. Now, your range on 110 with 035 self-shielded, you can go all the way up to 280 inches per minute wire feed speed and all the way down to 45 inches. I'm going to set it somewhere around 210 inches per minute wire feed speed. On the volts, you can go up to 21.9 on 110 and all the way down to, uh, let's set it to 16 volts. Now, make sure you reverse the polarity in this. So your torch lead will be minus and then your ground lead will be positive. I've ran a ton of self-shielded flux core wire, but I had to try a 308. And when you're looking at this arc, it's very aggressive and it produces a lot of fume generation. Not only that, a lot of spatter. And when you go to chip it off, it doesn't chip off like dual shield flux core or even stick rod. It's very hard to get off. It's more like a 6010 to get clean. But the welds seem very consistent. If you are in a bind and you don't want to worry about shielding gas, get this wire. Next up is 035-308L, 60,000 material thickness with 98.2 CO2. Just like 308 LSI, we're going to make sure the machine is set for chrome nickel stainless steel, 035 wire diameter with a 98.2 CO2. I'm going to use this cursor over here and uh, look at my wire feed speed. I'm going to set it around 140 inches per minute which equates to about 50 thousandths material thickness at 66 amps. And my volts, I'm going to turn them up to around uh, 16 volts. So we're 66 amps at 16 volts at 140 inches per minute. It's another horizontal fillet weld, but 60 thousandths material thickness. Remember the 308 LSI, I was doing a backward C motion. This one I'm doing a whip and pause motion just to see what the difference will be. I could have tried that with the 308 LSI, but, you know, we're doing something different. So, whip and pause. You know, we are getting a little bit more spatter with the whip and pause, but as far as, like, consistency, it's very consistent with uh, the wetting of the toes and of the base plate. Check out the seam. Nice weld seam. Couldn't ask for anything better. Consistent. Awesome! This is 190 thousandths material thickness, but on 230 volt power. Oh yeah, and we're running a vertical up T-joint, and I'm turning this down to about 215 inches a minute at 14.9 volts. I'm going to get this thing tacked up. It took me about two or three tries to figure out the exact setting, because with stainless steel, it's very sluggish. So you want to make sure your volts and wire feed speed settings are right, otherwise it will droop down on you. But my pattern is uh, up to the joint down to the side over up in the joint down to the side over up in the joint down the side over and depending on your fillet size you can make a tighter pattern move faster if you want a wider one go slower but very consistent look how clean that is here's 308l on 190 thousandths material thickness but on one tempo you got to be getting it by now Set your wire type, which is stainless steel, 035, 98.2, CO2. And up here, my wire feed speed's at 135 inches right now, but I'm going to bump this up somewhere around 210 inches per minute. Um, the machine's at 15.2 volts, but I'm going to turn this up around 17.9 uh, volts. Now, keep in mind, we are on 110 power, and if you noticed... We are in that range of globular or short circuit, so we are getting quite a bit more spatter. But we're getting more spatter too compared to the 308 LSIs because there's no silicon in it. 
Um, but I'm doing a whip and pause motion to get somewhat of like a dime stack. But you can see we're limited on uh, amperage, wire feed, speed, and volts because we are 110 power. But check it out. I did get some color in it. We do have a little bit of spatter, but it's very consistent. Nice little weld seam. The last one. Dun, dun, dun. But it's on 230 volt power. Horizontal fillet weld. Okay, we have the machine set up for stainless steel 035 with 98.2 CO2 at 465 inches per minute at 22.1 volts. This gets us into like a spray arc. And I'm running a horizontal fillet well just to show you. But look at this travel speed. Uh, somewhere around 20 inches per minute. Very consistent. The toe is wet right in. I'm running about, uh, about a quarter inch contact tip to work, work distance. I like a really short arc when I run spray and stainless steel. Uh, we're not getting a lot of spatter, like I said. Very consistent, clean, and this is where I like to run it uh, at 190,000. So I think this is maybe quarter inch. Yeah, it's quarter inch. Look at this weld seam. Heck yeah. <laughs> Trans steel. We need a better one than that. Trans steel. Oh man, I'm so lightheaded. Oh, weird. Weird. Milky cereal, baby. Milky cereal, baby. Milky cereal, baby. What we really need is good penetration. Hey, watch that stick out. <laughs> Check out these cool videos, right? Here? Egg welding stainless with bifrodius is so much fun. So much fun it is. It is so much fun. Dip, 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 dab, 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 dab.